Hi everyone, this video is about the EBQ or the evidence-based question, which is one of two different types of free response questions students will be expected to respond to on the AP Psychology exam. In today's video, I will walk through the format of the EBQ using a sample given by the College Board. I'll go through each part step by step. So first, what is an EBQ? Well, an EBQ will ask you to read three peer-reviewed research studies that have been summarized and abbreviated. Then you will need to develop an argument in three parts, and you're expected to spend no more than 45 minutes on this portion. The CED recommends students spend about 15 minutes reading the three sources and then using the remaining time to develop the argument. So what will an EBQ ask you to do? Well, in part A, the EBQ will ask students to propose a claim based in psychological science that responds to the question. Now your claim should be one single sentence, but this sentence is an important one because it will direct the focus of the rest of your response. The claim will need to argue a point. And so this means that someone could potentially agree or disagree with your claim. Now a claim isn't just an opinion, it's a belief statement that you'll need to be able to support with specific evidence from the sources provided in the EBQ. So with that said, you will likely need to begin reading the sources before you generate a claim. Your claim will be worth one point. The next part is part B, which has two requirements. The first says support your claim using at least one piece of specific and relevant evidence from one of the sources. So as you start to read the sources and you begin to generate an opinion based on the sources that are provided to you, you're going to need to pull out a specific piece of evidence from one of the sources that supports your claim. And it's important that it's correctly cited. This means that you need to tell which source your evidence came from. And you have two ways that you could do that. You could either use parenthetical citations or you could use in-text citations. So for example, you could say 80% of female participants saw improvement using the medication for two weeks and then follow that statement with the name of the source in parentheses, like source A. And it's perfectly okay to say source A. You don't necessarily need to name the authors or the title of the study. Another option is to directly mention the source within the sentence, like saying, according to source A, 80% of female participants saw improvement using the medication for two weeks. And there's a number of different ways you could do this in text citation. You could say, as presented in source A, or source A notes that, now, this first piece of evidence is being presented, and it needs to be presented in a way that it does connect to the claim. So you want to make sure that it's relevant to the claim that you're making if you want to earn this point. And you also must cite the source. Now, it's only one point, so if you do one or the other, you still cannot earn that point. You need to both present relevant evidence and cite the source for that one point. Now, the second part of this section called Part B asks students to explain how the evidence supports your claim using a psychological perspective, theory, concept, or research finding learned in AP Psychology. Now, many students use this same pattern of writing in English or history or even science classes. Sometimes teachers use different acronyms like CER for claim, evidence, reasoning, or TEA for thesis, evidence, analysis. And this is a similar approach. You're going to make a claim, support it with evidence, and then explain how that piece of evidence supports your claim. The one place that this is just a little bit different, though, is where you include a psychological concept that you learned in AP Psychology. This means it needs to be something from your brain, something that you're able to recall on your own outside of the source and then connect it or relate it to the evidence and the claim. So it's a kind of a cool moment for you to go, hey, look what I learned in AP Psychology and look how I can connect it to this evidence. So this part is worth two points because you're doing two important things. You're sharing how the evidence connects to your claim and you're also then relating it to a perspective, 
theory, concept, or research finding that you learned in AP Psychology. All right, so now it's time for the third and final part. It's called Part C. And Part C has just two pieces, like Part B, and you'll notice they're almost identical. So I put them up here at the same time, and we're going to take just a closer look at them. So just like you did in Part B, you're going to have to present evidence to support your claim. It says support your claim using an additional piece of specific and relevant evidence from a different source than the one that was used in part B. So similarly, the evidence needs to support your claim and you also have to cite the source, but it has to come from a different source. Now the second part of part C is just like the second part of part B. It's also worth two points. The first point requires you to explain how this new piece of evidence also supports your claim. And the second point requires you to come up with another connection. So with this new piece of evidence, you'll share and explain how it connects to your claim, but then you need to come up with a new and additional concept that you learned in AP Psychology that relates to this second piece of evidence. So in total, the EBQ is worth seven points, which I've summarized here. You're going to make a claim. You're going to share one piece of evidence, and you're going to explain that evidence and make a connection to it. Then you're going to share a second piece of evidence that supports your claim, explain it, and then make another connection to this new piece of evidence. Now, because the EBQ contains three sources, I won't go through a full example in this video, but I do want to show you what a sample response is like, and I want you to see the sample prompt that they've given in the CED. You can access this same document by searching AP Psychology CED online, and then you'll be able to find this sample EBQ towards the end of the PDF in the section that's titled Sample Exam Questions and their example prompt is here. So all EBQs will have the same requirements in parts A, B, and C, but each EBQ will give you a specific topic on which they want you to focus your claim. This one says, using the sources provided, develop and justify an argument about the best time for school to start for students in grades 6 to 12. So they're wanting you to focus on a claim revolving around school start times. Now here are a few screenshots of the three sources that they provide you in the CED to go with this sample EBQ, and you can see that they have varying lengths, and students will need to read these sources while thinking about the claim that they're going to make about school start times. Now I wanna highlight a few tips from the scoring guide that accompanies this sample in the CED. So let me start with a claim. On the screen is the scoring guide and notes that go along with this particular sample. And I circled this section about different claims that would score this one point. And I want you to notice that they are all just one sentence and they all make a statement that can be backed up with evidence from the sources. And I'll read you their example claims. The first one says, school for secondary students should start later in the day. Or school for secondary students should start sometime before 8 a.m. Or secondary school students should start at 9 a.m. And the last claim they have is secondary school students should start school two hours later than elementary students. And then you can see there's an additional note at the bottom. It says that you can still earn a point for a relevant claim, even if you don't earn the points in parts B and C. So now let's look at the scoring for the evidence in part B. Now remember, you need to share a relevant piece of evidence and cite the source. And this is the example that they gave. They shared their statement that secondary school start time should be 9 a.m. And they gave this piece of evidence of 28% of students reported falling asleep at least once a week. And then they cited source A. And notice how they used a data point as evidence that supported their claim and they cited the source. After sharing that evidence, they're going to need to explain it and then they're going to need to make a connection to a concept that they come up with on their own. So let's look at their sample. So for the second part of B, 
I know this can be a little bit difficult for you to see because the font is really small, but I'm reading the section that says examples that can earn two points. And so I'll just read it out loud to you. Um, this is their example. They said, this evidence supports the claim of starting school later than 9 a.m. instead of 8 a.m. because it will allow students to have one more hour of sleep and potentially reducing the number of times they fall asleep in school. When students have adequate amount of sleep, their ability to consolidate and retrieve memory is better, thus positively affecting their learning. So this response does both requirements. It correctly interprets the evidence and it explains it. Then it applies to a psychological concept and they apply it correctly. And they're using the concept of how more sleep um, helps to better memory consolidation and retrieval. All right, so for part C, their example of a point-worthy response is, according to source B, students earn higher GPAs when they started school one hour later. And notice this response provides specific and correctly cited evidence that's relevant to the claim, and the evidence comes from a different source than the one that they used in part B. All right, now let's finish up part C. The sample response that would score both points explains the evidence and makes a connection. So I'll read you their sample response. It says, this evidence supports my claim because a student's circadian rhythm would fall more naturally in the different start times. So this response correctly interprets the evidence and applies the concept of circadian rhythm, which is different than the concept that they used in part B. So that's it, guys. I hope that you have a little bit more clarity on how to approach an EBQ for the AP Psychology exam.